As pilots, when we want to look something up, we can almost always rely on our trusty FAR aim. The regulations, as well as the aeronautical procedures, cover a pretty broad range of scenarios we might find ourselves in. Air traffic controllers have the same kind of reference. It's given the cryptic name 7110.65. You could find it by googling 7110.65 or going through the FAA site like this to find it. It has the same feel of the aim in that it has chapters and subparts covering different aspects of air traffic control. In the very first section, it states the purpose of the document as providing ATC procedures and phraseology. Controllers will heavily reference this document in addition to the standard operating procedures specific to their facility. Let's take a look at some highlights that we pilots can use to make ourselves smarter in the air. One great piece of info is on how ATC gives vectors to final on an instrument approach. 5-9-1 sheds light on it. ATC has to give you a vector such that you'll intercept the final approach course no closer than two miles from something called the approach gate. What's the approach gate? It's a point along the approach that's typically one mile outside the final approach fix. So basically, ATC is gonna give you a vector to allow an intercept at least three miles from the final approach fix. On some approaches like an ILS, they might be able to give you an intercept closer to the approach gate if the weather's good enough or even get you close to the final approach fix if you ask for it. There are restrictions on how much an intercept angle ATC can give you as well. No more than 20 degrees if you're on a close-in intercept, but typically no more than 30 degrees for a normal vector to final. This helps you anticipate where, when, and how you'll be told to fly a vector to final approach. There's a bit more nuance to these requirements, so read up on it yourself. Did you ever wonder how ATC decides if they're going to issue a visual approach or assign the instrument procedure? 7-4-2 sheds light on this. A vector for a visual approach may be initiated if the reported ceiling at the airport of landing is at least 500 feet above the minimum vectoring altitude slash minimum IFR altitude and visibility is 3 miles or greater. We as pilots don't often know what the minimum vectoring altitude is, so knowing just the ceiling at the airport isn't really enough to be able to anticipate if we're getting the visual or not. Still, the reg makes it so ATC has a good enough buffer to be able to give you a vector to pick up the visual approach. Without that buffer, ATC has to vector you for an instrument approach procedure, but should you then gain sight of the airport and let ATC know, you could be cleared for a visual anyways. So it's good to let ATC know when you've spotted the field for their own planning purposes. The 7110.65 even gives phraseology examples for this and other situations. The controller will tell the aircraft to fly a certain heading, and then follow that with vector for visual approach to whatever airport name. The phraseology examples may be one of the more useful things in the 7110.65 for us to go through, but have a look at some parts of this for yourself. A good amount of what's in here is also covered in the AIM, but here it carries the force of regulation and is the actual playbook used by the controllers you're talking to. And check out IFR Ground School at the Flight Insight website linked here or in the description today.